welcome. My name is Chris from ChristopherHall.com and welcome to this week's whiteboard. Today's topic is the importance of a healthy digestive system. We talk a lot about food and nutrition. Uh, we talk about the right foods to eat, right foods to avoid and things like that. But a lot of that can fall down on the basis that you're just not absorbing and digesting the food well enough to extract the necessary nutrients from the food. So where we are eating the right foods, we're drinking plenty of water, so on and so forth, what we then need to be able to do is get our digestive system healthy to be able to maximize the uptake of the nutrition that we're putting into our body. Obviously, if we're putting poor nutrition in, then uh, that's going to have an adverse effect. Your body's going to be processing food uh, that there is no nutritional or very little nutritional value. It's going to clog up the system and that's going to cause problems um, like we see today with, with illness and conditions and diseases and things like that. So we've got to keep the healthy digestive system because that is the foundation to our health. Not only putting the right foods in, we've got to have a body that can that can process that food. And that's what we're going to look at today. So I've, we've kind of broken it up into um, two sections, but we're going to look at the two sections kind of at the same time. So we're going to look at the anatomy of the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine and the large intestine. And as we're doing that, we're going to look at the process of digestion. So I've done it in that order. Now there are more organs that um, that work with uh, digestion, but we're just going to focus on these four because it's these four that are the ones that, uh, or certainly in the small intestine, that's where the food, let's just say, enters the body, if you will. Um, obviously, we put food in our mouth and chew it up and it goes into the stomach, so it's kind of in the body, but it only gets into the bloodstream and to the other organs when it reaches the small intestines and the large intestines. So that's why we're talking about that. I'll do another one on the liver because the liver is a very important organ um, in the way that it uh, sort of detoxifies and um, sort of processes the food that little bit further before it enters um, the, the, the the general circulation, as it's called. Um, when it gets to the small intestine, it does move into the, into the bloodstream, but only as far as the... Um, as the liver. Um, so yes, so before we get to that, uh, just quickly mention, I've got my social media, so please do come along on Twitter, it's at Christopher Hole, Facebook, Christopher Hole Training, and Instagram is Christopher Hole, so please do come along there, like and follow, it'd be great to have you there. Alternatively, come to the website, ChristopherHole.com, uh, you can go there and you can just explore the website, you can go to ChristopherHole.com forward slash workshops, uh, run two workshops, one based on health, which is the health coaching program, uh, where it's it's more about this kind of thing. It's education. It's not there to sell a product. It's uh, it's just education about the body, how it works, healthy eating, healthy thinking, healthy exercise, so on and so forth. That's what it's all geared around is health, not necessarily fitness, but more about health because there is a difference. So yeah, please do come along there. It'd be great to have you there and meet you face to face. Uh, so we'll go straight into it. So we'll, first of all, we'll talk about the mouth and the stomach and then we'll go on to the small intestine and the large intestine. So the importance of healthy digestion. Now, digestion begins in the mouth. A lot of people think it's sort of when it reaches the stomach and the small intestine, but it, it starts in the mouth. So what the mouth is doing is it's tearing up and it's chewing the food. That's starting to break down the food. Then you get the saliva, which begins to lubricate it and break it down a bit further, but basically it's preparing it for the, the inside of the body, if you will. So you've got the stomach, which is where it arrives next. Now, it sits just below the liver. Now, I will do another um, video on the liver because I think the liver deserves a, a video unto itself because it's quite a it's quite an organ and, and it does quite a lot of work. So we'll leave that for another one. Um, but basically, food is delivered via the esoph esophageal sphincter. And what the stomach does is it does it has two processes. First is a chemical breakdown, which is via enzymes. And then it has a mechanical breakdown, which is via muscle contractions. So what that's starting to do is it starts to churn the food. So the uh, the muscles of the stomach, they aren't like other muscles, which sort of lie in a uniform direction. Because it wants to churn and move the food, the muscles sort of lay themselves down in a 
to some degree in a random or what might seem like a random fashion it's not necessarily a random fashion it is organized because it wants to churn the food but in regard to like a normal muscle um there are a number of muscles that sort of cross over each other and work in different directions to be able to churn the food in a mechanical way what that then does is that allows the enzymes to get in and around the the, the broken down food from the mouth to break it down that much more so the, me the mechanical breakdown and the chemical breakdown are kind of working together to be able to prepare the food further so it's breaking it down further for the small intestines so it's when we get into the small intestines is where we start to really see some more things happen and it goes through you can see down here it enters through the esophage uh, esophageal sphincter at the top it then gets churned and moved around the whole of the stomach and then it uh, and then it moves into the the pyloric part which is where the pyloric sphincter is and then it moves into the uh, into the small intestine and what we have here is the small intestine is uh, when it enters the f the the first hundred centimeters of the, f of the small intestine are adapted to absorb nutrients after this uh, fluids and electrolytes are absorbed so what we're talking about is as it moves from the stomach into the uh, small intestine here it's this initial uh, uh, duodenum which is is designed to uh, I guess does uh, absorb the foods into the system we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second but what basically happens is further enzymes are released and they're from the pancreas this time so pancreatic enzymes are released and what it's doing is proteins are getting turned into amino acids and then uh, which is the smallest component which is essentially what the body wants the body doesn't want the protein the body wants the amino acids so the proteins are getting broken down into amino acids the carbohydrates are getting broken down into mono and disaccharides and then fats are getting broken down into their individual lipids now what this is then doing this is uh, sort of the the raw materials that the body wants and what it does is you've got various layers to the small intestine the the, the top layer being sort of this layer here and what you've got at the bottom of this layer is you've got all the villi the uh, and, and the crypts are the kind of the the funnels that, that take it down to the villi now what the villi do is as they sort of get food if you will or as they start to recognize food moving towards them they open up and spread their surface area and what that does that then allows when the food makes contact with it it allows it to pass it into as is mentioned here into the bloodstream via the portal vein and um, through the lymphatic or the intestinal lymphatics now what's if, if you were to I, I guess sort of zoom in on um, on the villi they're little fingery projections so they sort of stick out they obviously have their little doorways if you will that absorb the food through but then what you have if you can imagine a finger sort of sticking up so if we just use this as a finger here you've got a variety of um, lymphatic uh, vessels and a, a, a circulatory um, sort of um, what's the word uh, blood vessels and what happens here is the proteins and the carbohydrates go into the into the blood vessels and then they then get passed via the portal vein up to the liver and then what the liver does is the liver then further processes detoxifies and make sure it's the, the the materials going in are as clean and ready to be used by the body as possible in a very simple sense so you get your proteins and carbohydrates they enter the bloodstream they go to the liver get further processed and detoxed and then they go off to the muscles the various tissues the skin wherever it needs to go to be used if you will and then what happens is the the fats get broken down into lipids and they enter the intestinal lymphatics the lymphatics then bypass the liver and it just goes into general circulation so when general what i mean by general circulation it goes into bloodstream it gets taken up to the heart and then the heart pumps it around the body so if you're exercising it will go to the muscles if you're resting it could go to various other tissues for um, growth and repair whatever it might be so that's i guess the role of the, the small intestines is and that's the point where it gets you could say into the body as i describe it 
Um, obviously, it has to go through the liver before it goes into general circulation, but now it's absorbed sort of from the digestive system into the circulatory system. And that's where it enters the, um, the circulation to be then used by the body. So, so far, we've talked about taking in the food through the mouth and the stomach, We've then talked about breaking down the food in the in the mouth, in the stomach, and in the small intestines. And now what we've sort of alluded to is using the food via the liver and general circulation, which I'll discuss in another video. But what we come on to now is then eliminating any waste products. And that's done in the small intestines. Now, what we get here is largely indigestible substances. So the, the stuff that the food can either digest or absorb goes into the large intestines. Now, if you're eating uh, good prebiotic foods, then what you will do is you'll feed the good probiotic bacteria. And what will then happen is your, your, uh, your body will then process uh, the, the food and your, your bowels will become healthy in a way that they can then eliminate the food effectively. What will also happen is you'll then absorb more water, some nutrients, but you will then get also a lot of electrolytes. So sodium and chloride are the two main ones. So if there are any of those left in the um, in the in the sort of the food stuff that you that, that, that you're eliminating, the large intestine is there to um, to remove or to remove that and put it into the body. And what will happen is, as you can see on this diagram here, it will start at the bottom and it will go up the ascending tract, across the transverse tract, and then down descending, ready to be eliminated from the body. So it's got that um, that sort of final, um, you could say, stretch to be able to go through, uh, or final bit of travelling to go through before it's eliminated. And that's where the, uh, the water is absorbed, and the electrolytes are absorbed, and some nutrients are absorbed. Now, Keeping these large intestines healthy is key to the rest of this system. If we can keep the large intestines healthy with good probiotic bacteria breaking down the food, good a, a good environment, then <clears throat> the, um, the food will then move through the system that much quicker. If it's moving through the system that much quicker, I liken it to like a flowing river. Now, if you go to a flowing river, it, it's healthy, it's, it's, it's free-flowing, and um, any waste products are dealt with. If you go to a stagnant pool of water, what you find is there is a lot more um, unhealthy bacteria, unhealthy organisms there, and the water generally looks a lot unhealthier. There might be microbes growing, and it generally doesn't look that good. And that's the kind of metaphor you can use for your large intestine. Because if that's not moving, then you're going to get the unhealthy bacteria growing. That's then going to communicate with the brain, and then you get your um, um, unstable mood, you get uh, disrupted sleep, so on and so forth. So we want to be able to keep the bowels moving, and that's where the high-fibre foods come, because that obviously helps that move through high water content foods because that keeps it lubricated plus you'll absorb any um any excess water back into the body as well so it's 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 not necessarily one whole system so when we talk about um chewing food we have to do that correctly when it talks about um stress levels we have to we have to manage our stress levels because what the stress levels make your muscles contract and there are muscles throughout this whole system, so right down the esophageal um, or the esophagus, into the stomach, through the intestines, up into the large intestines. This is what's called smooth muscle. It's not the same as um, uh, like muscles of the of the arm or the leg, but they are muscles. And when we are stressed, they contract and they don't work as effectively. So we have to keep our stress levels managed. We have to eat the right foods, i.e. high fiber, high water content, high nutrient foods. And if you want to sort of expand out, it's about keeping um, our body functioning with regards to exercise as well that helps manage and um, uh, the movement and the impact also helps the movement of, um, of food throughout that system. So where we've talked about the individual parts of the system, they all have to work together to create an optimally functioning digestive system, which is what I describe as health. Health is the optimal function of all body systems. Your digestive system is one of those systems and the organs that make it up are a part of that. So we have to keep them working together 
by giving it the right environment to be able to do that, which is the right foods, the right um, stress levels, and the right movement and activity to be able to work effectively. So as a summary, with all of that said, where we're keeping our digestive system healthy as a whole, we need to keep the uh, the organs healthy. And we do that by managing stress levels, by eating the right foods, and by giving ourselves the right amount of exercise, activity, movement, and recovery. So hopefully that sort of gives you a greater understanding of not only do we need to eat the right foods, we need to keep the, the system optimal so we can absorb and use the foods as well because if we're stressed all the time we won't absorb the foods so we might be eating a great diet but we're not absorbing them to be able to use them and they'll just pass through the body um, or potentially they'll fester in the large intestines and not pass through the body as effectively so it's it's about bringing all of those three components together the the mindset the nutrition and the exercise to allow our body and give it the right environment to be able to work effectively so uh, that kind of brings me to the end. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's been useful. Hopefully it's given you a greater understanding of of health and how we use our foods. Um, if you obviously have any more questions, please do come along to social media on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. You can see them here up in the top right hand corner. Alternatively, come to one of the workshops. We talk about this further. If you have questions, I can answer them directly, so on and so forth. So many thanks for uh, watching. Many thanks for listening. My name is Chris from ChristopherHole.com. I'll speak to you in the next video.